financial analyst John Jackson, and also a lady who wears many hats, social and political activist Betty Ann Blaine. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Kalila. Thank you. Well, let me start with you, Ms. Blaine. Yes. It was Andrew Holness's first budget debate as opposition leader. What was your general impression of him? Well, um, I've never seen him so forceful. Um, obviously, he's really, um, he's, he's learning the craft. Um, of course, he peppered um, the, the prime minister, um, particularly on the issue of, um, you know, the, the JPS and the, the, the increase in, um, in, in GCT on, on electric bills, which she had promised during the election campaign that she would eliminate. And he took her to task on that. Um, I was quite intrigued um, to hear him talk about um, reform in the politics generally. Um, I don't know, maybe confession is good for the soul. <laughs> but when I heard him say, listen, we've got to stop tricking the people, stop promising them things we can't keep, essentially, um, I said to myself, this is interesting. But um, I. Uh, the, the, the truth is that if you remember before the elections or during the elections, um, Andrew Holness kept talking about, in fact, people say one of the reasons he lost was because he did, in fact, say to the Jamaican people, the medicine is going to be bitter. Mm -hmm. um, so here we have it. Well, today he described it as poison. He said it wasn't just bitter, it was poison. And the truth is that we are now caught between a rock and a hard place. What we have here now is 40 years, maybe more, some people might argue, but 40 years of an accumulation of um, just very little growth. We are heavily in debt, $1.7 trillion, and um, there is no wiggle room. We don't have an IMF agreement at the moment. Um, I don't know. This is we're in, we're in a crisis. Right. We're in a crisis. And, oh. um, I am hoping, though, that people will understand this is going to have to be shared sacrifice because I hear some... Well, well let, me, uh, let me ask Mr. Jackson yeah. here. Mr. Jackson, Andrew Holness said if the JLP had been re-elected that they would not have taxed certain basic food items that the PNP has now chosen to tax. He said they wouldn't have taxed textbooks, they wouldn't have taxed animal feed and seeds, but they did propose some of those measures during their time and had to withdraw them. Given the island's financial bind, do you think they would have had a choice? The money has to come from somewhere. Yeah, but there are a number of factors and, um, that we have to take into consideration, some of which he, he didn't state, but um, one that I keep on stating, that when we look at what happened last year in terms of the revenues, the government itself borrowed more money 30 odd billion dollars more than it had planned to borrow between March, between April and August last year. That wasn't spent. And in, in, on top of that, they spent about $15 billion less than they had projected to have spent um, between that period of time. So, in effect, what the government did was to significantly tighten the economy. And that tightening was felt between September and December and led to decline in revenues versus projection, except for that period. Between April and August, the revenues were on target except for grants. January and February, they were on target except for grants. And in March, only corporate taxes was actually below target. So that it presupposes that the base that we are starting off with in terms of revenue is faulty. It is likely to be higher and quite a bit higher than it really is. So your in answer, addition, so your answer addition, is yes. The government has projected some $17 billion more in interest payment this fiscal year. There's no logical reason why that is the case. And all I can believe is that they have actually padded the numbers just in case something goes wrong, it will come down. But that figure should be more like $115 billion as opposed to $137 billion. So I'm suggesting there's some faultiness in crafting the figures. And if you arrive at crafting figures, then you're going to end up with the tax package that we talk about having. But in truth, in fact, we probably don't need that level of taxation that has been mm -hmm. applied. 
So I don't buy the argument that we didn't have choices. I believe we had choices. Um, somebody needs to get to the drawing board and really find out what has happened. And I don't believe that that's, that has been done. Oh, Ms. Blaine, you've been outspoken on the issue of high energy prices. Right. You've been a founding member of CURA, the Citizens right, United to right. Reduce Energy Rates. Right. What do you think of the new administration's plan to remove GCT from most residential light bills, but to raise it 65% for those over 300 kilowatt hours a month? That's They've framed it as tax relief, but Mr. Holness says it's hypocritical. It is, and I, that's a serious problem, especially for small businesses. I really don't know how they're going to survive. Um, as I said before, you know, we are in a very tight spot. And here is what worries me even more, is that there is no stimulus. Where is there is no stimulus? There is no stimulus for production. Um, I don't know how we're going to get out of it. Um, but, but clearly, uh, in, this, in the negotiation with the IMF, we're going to have to try to, well, we're going to have to uh, make a case for some stimulus for production. I mean, this has been our problem, that if you don't produce and you're borrowing, you're going to be in serious trouble. You're not producing, and yet you're borrowing. And we have a problem. We're going to have to find a way to stimulate production. This is where I think we're going to have to focus our energies. And let me just say this, what is required now, you know, is what I mentioned before, shared sacrifice. It cannot be now that we have various interest groups drug in to, 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 to put their positions forward um, at the expense of other groups. And so people are going to have to come to the table, the major players, as honest brokers, and look at how we're going to dig our way out of this. But isn't, but isn't it a good thing that they've raised the tax, the tax threshold? Of course. But I'm just saying that it, that is not going to solve the problem. Um, you, well, you know that Cure, when you're talking about the electricity, you know that Cure has, is right now um, uh, taking the JPS to court. The case is coming up soon to challenge a monopoly license. And we, we are arguing that... The only way we'll get the relief with the light bills, you know, is going to be when there is more competition in the market. And so that's what we are pushing for, a breakup of this monopoly, which in fact is illegal because it contravened the Electric Act. Mm. Um, I, I am very worried when I look at the taxation on the poor, basic food items, um, I really don't know how people are going to survive. I mean, that's a constituency I work with. Even before this, people couldn't buy food. So I'm trying to figure out how they're going to do it after this. What about the textbook issue? Oh, that is one that is, um, I, I am, it's, I, that's a real problem for me and for us at New Nation. I mean, for a country that has such serious problems with educating our people, we're so far, far behind regionally and globally. To put a tax on textbooks is absolutely serious, and we should fight that one. We should definitely mount um, some kind of pressure on the government to say that that is not a, you can't take textbooks we don't read. Already the, the people don't read, our people don't read. And to go put an additional tax, to put a tax on textbooks, it's just, um, it, oh. it can't work. It can't work. We look. We we understand. We have to sacrifice certain things. Now let me bring Mr. Jackson. Let me bring Mr. Jackson book. back in, Ms. Blaine. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Holness said today, looking again at the specifics of the budget, that he doesn't think the estimated eight percent growth in tax revenues is realistic. But last year, tax revenues grew by five percent. So it doesn't seem that far-fetched to me. What do you think? Well, uh, as I indicated to you, there are certain things that happened last year that would have led to a shortfall in the tax revenues. It's not so much the inability of the economy to deliver the tax revenues last year, but the fact that the government entered into unscheduled tightening of the economy, which led to a slowdown in the economic activity in the second half of the year. And the other factor is that the, the elections actually disrupted things in December. Um, and therefore, back through off the revenue base. So when you get back 
to normal and, and eliminate those anomalies, you, you'll recognize that the probability of revenues growing by 10% is probably greater than what the opposition leader is suggesting or what the government has projected it to be. Mm. Well, thank you both for joining us for this discussion. As social and political activist Betty Ann Blaine, as well as chartered accountant and financial analyst John Jackson. Well,